Special guests, Joe Castro and the legendary Rick Shapiro. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble. Yeah, that was a great joke, Kevin. That, that did not work. Gobble, gobble is not a punchline, Kevin. Uh, welcome, folks, to the show. Uh, we're, we're happy to see you guys here. We got a great show. I'm very excited that we have our guests tonight, Rick Shapiro and Joe Castro. I am excited. I'm excited, excited, excited. Um, now, this, as we all know, is a 2020 Thanksgiving. So we're going to, this show is going to represent 2020 Thanksgiving. Now, a lot of people complain. They say, this is, uh, this is terrible. I can't see my relatives. I can't, I can't do all, you know, I, we can't have these get togethers. We can't go out. Single people can't go out to the bars and get laid. You know what I mean? That's what Steve and I were talking about. But anyway, it's it's different. But you know what? Me and my staff, we've decided that there are things to be thankful for. And we, we've compiled a list of things that we think we should all be thankful for. And I think you should too. I mean, think about it. Okay? I mean, I'm a, we, you got to be thankful for all the little things. Except for my check. That's, that should be a bigger thing. Because it's yeah. non-existent. <laughs> it's non-existent right now. We got to be thankful, okay? Think about it. Masks. People are complaining about the masks, but think about it. The masks, they hide gross people's faces. <laughs> the urinals are more bearable. The bathrooms in general are more bearable, you know? Think about it. <laughs> it's true, right? We also know when our breath is bad now, you know, because we have to breathe it. Uh, we, we, now there's so many great things about it. We, we can close a zoom window when we have a bad date. Uh, we, we can go to meetings without worrying about traffic or pants, you know, <laughs> we, we can go to the, to, to all the old places that our exes and I and, and used to go with us because nobody's going to recognize us. We got a mask. It's great. You know, we don't have to have those awkward conversations at the dinner table with distant relatives who in inevitably turn to politics. You know, we don't have to get in another fist fight with cousin Larry because he won't stop farting at the table. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. That was real, folks. <laughs> Kevin's a method actor. <laughs> Nobody has to worry about drunk uh, Uncle Tommy driving home. Uh, we can, we can private chat our disdain for each other and our snide comments. So we don't hate each other and fight. We don't have to lie about cat Aunt Kathy's fruitcake. Uh, we, we can act like we miss everyone without having to hug them. You know, uh, oh, we can buy the same amount of alcohol, but we drink it so much better. And we, here's the, here's the biggest part. We don't have to sleep on that nasty 1970s pull-out couch that smells like mildew and dog's ass with grandma walking around in her nighty that you can see through. And that's what, that's what we're all thankful for. <laughs> so be thankful for all those things, okay? And if you have more things to be thankful for, please send them in. Um, anyway, so uh, Kevin, how are you today? Oh, wait, wait, wait. One more thing. Be thankful that you're not Johnny Rotten, who was, bit, <laughs> who was bitten by a flea on his penis. <laughs> Why would he announce that to the world? I don't know. <laughs> and I wonder hey, if a flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers wants to clarify things. Kevin, get bigger. Right? You're too small. You're too small. <laughs> I can't see it. That's what she said. You get that all the time, don't you, Kevin? Everybody does. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> that's what that's what she said. Let me help you out there, Kevin. There, right. you, go. there, there you go. There we go. I feel like I've arrived this week. Ready for a great show, Danny. Well, your head is disintegrating. That's so. okay. That's okay. That's how excited I am for the show. You may have to adjust your green screen. 
nope, this is perfect. <laughs> Fresh out of the box. This is how they work. Oh my god. Okay, so you half a brain. That's that's actually better. The floating head is not cheap, Danny. Not cheap. Well, you, you're you're not actually floating. You just half your brain is like missing. <laughs> yeah. What makes this different from any other week? <laughs> All right. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited. People are like hating this year and I, we all are in a lot of ways, but like I said, uh, we should be thankful. And you know, I've done some research, Kevin, you know that I did not. I did. I did some research. I dug into because everybody's wondering how did 2020 get so bad? Why, how is this happening? Who has created this horrible year? And is it God? What is it? And I had a feeling I saw this video with turkeys and what I did was I took our technology, which if, if you folks don't know, we have special technology that we can put a video into this technology and, and we can read the animals' minds as to what they're saying. And when I did this to these turkeys, Kevin, they're walking around a dead cat and I figured it out. Let's show, let's show people what, why 2020 is 2020. Animal mind reading technology. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to get my steps in by the end of this. Guys, can we please focus here? Is there a point to this? We sacrificed this cat to cause the destruction of the human race in 2020. Now, can you please all focus? I don't know about you, Ruth, but that gander over there really ruffles my feathers. Focus on the mantra. Focus on the mantra. What are you doing? Get off my tail. If we don't recite the mantra correctly and concentrate, the demon will never grant us the destruction of the human race. <laughs> there you go. All right. So what do you think? That's they, it. They got about two thirds of the mantra. I, I think they've done really well, actually, judging by this year. They haven't destroyed the human race. They've just really showed it a mirror and made it hate itself. <laughs> they've messed up a lot just actually. as good <laughs> <laughs> and it, was it just me or did one of those turkeys sound like marge simpson that's what i thought but right you know did you step on my tail <laughs> right you heard that right it's i did that was marge yeah. simpson it was see see Tur <laughs> not sure why that happened <laughs> They're clever, those turkeys. <laughs> They're coming at you from all angles. They're trying to take over the show. What the hell? They're trying to take over the show. That's okay. Oh, my goodness. So this how you been, day. Kevin? I'm good. I got I got some gravy waiting for them if they act up. You do, huh? I do. For the turkeys? <laughs> I do. I'm going to threaten them with it. Well, I am. The gravy I, Express. <laughs> I am very excited today. This is a big show. This is a big, 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 big show. Um. There, we've got uh, an amazing guest, but before we bring him on, I know, I know he's in, he's getting in the green room now. He's getting ready. Before we bring him on, I've got another surprise for you, Kevin. Really? Yes, I do. The I left in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna blow your mind. Okay. <laughs> what we have is we have someone on the scene taking footage of the Thanksgiving Day parade rehearsals, and I'm right. very excited. Yeah, we can actually cut occasionally back to those rehearsals and you know what let's just take a look at what's happening at the rehearsals now 2020 i love you you love me oh i've been stabbed oh help me i'm i'm deflating oh, oh my god cut back cut 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 bring us back to the studio that's oh my god that's horrible that's horrible what's happening yeah, sometimes you, you do a little too much of that I love you, you love me thing. Somebody gets jealous and stabs you. I guess so. so. I guess so. <laughs> well, it's gotta get it's gotta get better after that. I mean, that's just a bad start to those rehearsals. It's gonna be all right. I think it's, it's more important right. than ever this year for us to be thankful and festive, Danny. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, you know what? As a matter of fact, uh we have uh we actually have a uh uh all of the dishes that should be in the 2020 Thanksgiving. But first, before I do that, uh, I'd like to bring on our guest, if he's ready. No, not the name yet. Don't show the name. You're giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> you might remember our guest, our next guest from Project X, Lucky Louie, or even Pootie Tang. 
uh, with a stage career that has spanned over 25 years, this guy has completely avoided the cancel culture. Uh, he has been on a total of 34 film and television shows and commercials, and he's a legend in the comedy community. Uh, please, guys, welcome. We've got Rick Shapiro, who is is an artist, a comedian, an actor. He's everything. He's a bring him in, Rick. Rick, how are you, buddy? Can he, Hello, can, Rick. He, can he hear me? Oh, he doesn't have. <laughs> He's got a delay on his. With a stage career that has spanned over 25 years. Well, let's listen to the intro again. This is a fun technical glitch. Yes, it is. He has been on a total of 34. Are we going to be delayed the whole interview? And he's a legend in the comedy community. Hi. Welcome, Susanna, guys. We've got Rick Shapiro. I don't know. Is he in, yeah, Rick? Can. Buddy, you can Can you hear me? You on? I can't hear. Oh you. my! Is he on a serious delay? It appears to be. He he's on a serious delay. Okay, so Susanna, I want you to do me a favor. You talking uh, to me? Yeah, I'm Are talking. Are we on? Is this Zoom? Is it my <laughs> Can you can you call Rick Hello, and teach? Room? Oh Are man. <laughs> I love existential. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like sitting on a bucket when I'm talking to people, but all right, all right. What's happening, Rick? I don't know. I, I don't know how we're gonna do this with the delay. <laughs> I'm not used to this. I think you should sign off and come back in. Okay. Uh, uh, this right. is what I want you to. This is what I want you to do. I'm gonna I give you Rick's number, and I, I'm gonna have you explain <laughs> to him how to how to make. How to make this a priority? Uh, if he can do that, because I don't want anybody to know I'm over. We'll do. It. <laughs> this is he's on an HP. Uh, hey, look, okay, hold on. A this is why you do a test ahead of time. We didn't do this. Parky Stone. See, I'm, I'm not shaking because I have Parkinson's. I'm shaking because Shaky's the new cool. Okay. When Shaky uh, really seven up this shit, you guys are probably talking, having a great time. <laughs> 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 right. Here. Mother, come, come down here. Don't hit me. Look what I did. All right. I, I make... <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculously funny. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the I private chat. It, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Tracy's number and you explain it to her. Oh Good my morning. god, this is funny. <laughs> Good morning. Who's who? Danny, I'm good to see you. Hey buddy. Oh my, my oh yeah. Are, are you are you, you still on a delay? Yeah, he's on a delay. To hear you, just not. Okay, so I I gave you Tracy's you. number, and and you got to explain. You got to work Can it out with fresh? them. We're gonna bring you back. We're gonna bring yes. you back, Rick. I could use a little uh, e e e commuter with in ch chubby man's cat. We rehearsed for three days for this, by the way. <laughs> 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 oh my God! I knitted a green screen. So Susanna's going to try. That's our. That was our engineer who came on. She is going to try to talk to Tracy and Rick. Uh, Tracy uh, is is uh, going to be working with Rick, uh, his wife and manager, uh, to to get this technical glitch fixed. And uh, while while that's happening, <laughs> we're going to bring on uh, our our next guest first. Uh, I'm going to find the not. I'm going to I'm going to do the engineering while she's doing this. Okay. Uh, hold on. Okay. I bet the parade's going better than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I, of course I don't have Joe's intro here. That's, <laughs> that's okay. This is amazing. Rick is back in the studio. Beautiful. Is he ready? He, I have not spoken to him, but we will try. All right. We'll try it. Let's All see right. if this. Yeah, is there a delay now? I'm Pam Adline. Can you hear me? I think he's yes. got a... I can hear you, just not at the same time. <laughs> that's that's a problem. He's got. We got it. This is this is just 2020. This is so 2020 <laughs> right now. This is fucking 2020. Damn it! He's got to use the task <laughs> manager. He's got to go to details. I'm going to put all this in there. 
in words. Let's in let's words. bring Joe in. Joe Castro. Welcome, Joe. Joe, how are you? How's it going, Good. everybody? How you doing today? <laughs> Good. We're gonna work on Rick here. Uh, Kevin, talk to Joe for a second. <laughs> hey, Joe. <laughs> hey, Kevin. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Better yeah. than Johnny Rotten. Yes. You know, you know what? This is uh this is life. This is life. <laughs> it's you know, live a, and it's always life. a tightrope. We're you always know, walking that high wire. Yeah. What is it? Uh, the astronauts in space, you know what they do? They just do the next right thing until they live, come back down to Earth. There's always something going wrong. And they just keep trying to figure out the next problem to come back to Earth. That's all that's, that's all that's going on up there. This is one big one big science experiment. Gravity is not your friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's right okay we're taking hold on that's keep talking right, keep talking kevin keep talking uh, save the show <laughs> <laughs> kevin tell me so, tell me a joke tell, tell, i talk was to actually me. gonna ask you joe about your favorite thanksgiving ritual oh, or your favorite thanksgiving memory oh wow um let me see that's a good you know what i'll be honest with you last thanksgiving was amazing and let me tell you why because this woman came to our Thanksgiving every year. My partner, Stephen Escobar, and I have like a uh, the Hollywood Orphans Thanksgiving. It's everybody that lives in Hollywood. It's an actor or actress or someone in the industry that doesn't have family to go home to because their families all abandoned them. Or, you know, they don't talk to them anymore because they're artists out in Hollywood. And uh, this, uh, this, this, this lady, she is an amazingly talented, beautiful woman. Her name is Jackie Kong. She made a movie when she was 23 years old. A little, a little Asian girl in Hollywood made a, made a monster movie. And she inspired me to make monster movies when I grew up. And now she's one of my best friends in the whole wide world. And she came to Thanksgiving dinner to celebrate with all my, my family and friends in Hollywood. I just could not be any better than that. That's you know? beautiful. There okay. You go. I, I got an idea here. I, got, I, I, I feel bad about Rick here, right? So what we got to do is Suzanne, Susanna, you have the questions for Rick on that sheet. You have the questions for Rick on the sheet? Okay, so I can't hear you now. <laughs> so what we got to do is uh, 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 give him those questions. Those. Give him those questions. And then uh, when he comes back on, he can answer those questions. Gotcha. We'll do those first. <laughs> this is crazy. It's a rigged quiz. That's okay. So, I've got mashed potato stories to fill in the time. Nice. So, Joe, t uh, tell us about uh, Terror Tunes. Oh, Terror Tunes. Well, first of all, it's very hard word. It's kind of a hard title, title to even pronounce. Terror Tunes. Uh, my Siri won't even acknowledge the correct spelling of it. It's spelled Terror and then Tunes. T O O N S, like cartoons. And uh, it's a movie that my partner and I came up with uh, a little over twenty years ago. It's kind of a cult film. We made the entire movie. It's about people ask me, is it an animated movie or is it a live action movie? It's both. It's a movie about killer cartoons and they come out of the cartoon dimension into the real world. You know, it's a movie for, for anybody who's young at heart, who loves fantasy, who loves cult films. Um, and, uh, you know, this movie was made for $2,300. We shot wow. it. In, we shot it in three days. And there were eight copies of it in every blockbuster in America. And it sat on the same shelf right next to Pirates of the Caribbean. That's wow. Awesome. That's yeah. crazy. So, that kind of money, you could have had one boob enhanced. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you know, uh, yeah, I, there's a whole story to go, to go off on that. I, you did. That's okay. Uh, Kevin's <laughs> had both of his fixed. So. Of course, then I had them rescinded. That was even more. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not a movie for everybody. You know, if you like Adult Swim and you like, uh, uh, yeah, are you familiar with Herschel Gordon Lewis? You know who Herschel no. Gordon Lewis is? Herschel Gordon, Herschel Gordon Lewis is considered the godfather of gore. Now, he died four years ago, but the man invented the slasher splatter movie genre back in 1963. He made a movie titled Blood Feast. And, uh, and I, I had a chance to create the special effects for the sequel to the very first slasher movie ever in 2001, Blood Feast 2. And that's where I met Herschel. And, you know, I, I had no idea that Herschel had inspired me all those years to make cinema. And uh, so Terror Tunes is a little bit of Herschel Gordon Lewis and a little bit of Adult Swim, kind of with some zany Cartoon Network kind of stuff in it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely a very unique style. If you've never seen it... Um, 
you, you know, you, you look it up. It's uh, you, you can get all all three. There's three right now in the franchise. One, two, and three, and we're getting ready to shoot and produce and finish and get out part four. Terror Tunes right. four. Now you've done you've done both you've uh, dealt with both CGI and uh, with uh, practical effects. That's correct. Thirty nine years in the business doing this. Yeah, you've done a lot of stuff. Wow. Um, what what do you prefer? Well, you know, there's a place for both of them. You know, I think that, you know it's just like uh, you know in this world, there's a place that there's good and bad and everything, and uh, everything has a place. And uh, sometimes it can be a very symbiotic relationship between the two. I love old school practical effects. I like handcrafted movies. I like to see the real stuff. You know, but then there's a place for for CGI if you can if you can take it and you can and you can use it like to finesse where the practical effects lack, you know, the reality, then I think you have a, a great, a great combination of the two. I hope that makes sense. So, and it, there's a big difference in budget, right? So practical, you know, practical uh, effects are cheaper, right? Or CGI is coming down though, right? See, here's the deal. Uh, practical effects got very expensive. That's why they started doing digital effects ah. because of the skill level and the quality of the, you know, the, the materials being used and stuff. So practical effects can be very, very, very expensive. And CGI is actually less expensive these days. I mean, any ten, like literally 10 and 12 year olds know how to use a computer and they can make a, you know, a monster on their face and they, they know how to go through all these programs and edit movies themselves. I mean, they really, they're, they're, they're 10 and 12 year old you know they're filmmakers now with their iphone and they know how to do all this stuff can so, you send can you send some of these kids my way i need to make a absolutely, movie <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, well, they say that the average lifespan of a artist in the computer generated effects world is two to three years wow that's how many younger people are coming into the business that are willing to work for pennies on the dollar well so yeah i was gonna say i was gonna say they'll work for twinkies and ho-hos won't they at that right. age <laughs> they, 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 they were literally when they, I heard them when they were making Iron Man the film that the, the the teams of people doing the effects were literally just sleeping at their desk. They would just crawl under the desk and they'd sleep under the desk and they'd get up after eight hours and they'd start over. They'd start the next day. Wow! Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Who were your heroes growing up? Okay, that's a great question. I had some some and and, and they're still my heroes today, and, and some of them are still in my life. I said Jackie Kong already. Herschel Gordon Lewis, the godfather of gore, and Tom Savani, which is a very well-known household name among, amongst everybody in the horror world. Tom Savani is a is a very well-known, he, he's basically the king of slasher films and special effects. And, oh, I thought uh, you said I thought you said flasher films for a second. <laughs> no, sl <laughs> slasher movies. No, he 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 was responsible for just a slew of uh, amazing effects. Uh, film uh, oriented films back in the 80s uh and that everybody everybody knows and loves friday the original friday 13th friday 13th the final chapter he's actually the one that killed jason on camera uh i can the prowler uh on and on and on the burning all these uh, this, this series of amazing slasher films but you know he basically pioneered everything that we do today when it comes to slasher movies and gore as far as special effects is concerned i mean literally something that that man created has influenced literally hundreds if not thousands of filmmakers all over the world since he started doing special effects so big shout out to tom savani for all of he's done for us now what what are what are some of the biggest projects you've worked on Oh, let's see. Uh, biggest does not mean favorite. I just want to. I want to. I want to put that. I understand that. that. I understand. Uh, that. I worked on um, uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part One. I was did, did uh, some of the CGI, some CGI work on that film. Um, but you know, I, I it was it was so like there were literally a hundred people working in cubicles in a room in Santa Monica. I mean, if I, if I tried to, I couldn't even tell you what I was doing. I was isolating, you know, the lead character from a shot and I was extracting him. So that way they could build a 3d background for the 3d, 2d to 3d conversion for the projection, you know, it was, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, you know, all technical stuff. Um, but, uh, uh, go ahead. Now what your, what about your favorite? Oh, my favorite. Well, I, it's a, it's going to be a tough one. I can tell you one of my favorites How about that. Okay. Uh, one of my favorites would have, would have to be working with, um, with Herschel Gordon Lewis on uh, Blood Feast 2, you know, uh, given the opportunity to create the special effects to the very first slasher movie ever was something that I never dared dream that I'd be able to, uh, to, to, to have the opportunity to do. And then to befriend the, the man that has inspired so many people and have him actually be in one of my films. That was a, that was a real special moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome, man. Um, so, uh, hold on. Blood Feast sounds like 
what 2020 might have in store for December. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's what's next. <laughs> it's funny because most of the things you see in the original blood feast, when it was made in 1963, it, when you watch it today, it's been copied and duplicated and Xerox and mimicked so many times. It's almost cliche when you watch it today, you know, it's, it's like, it's lighthearted. It's like a lighthearted slasher film compared to what, what goes on today. <laughs> Well, let's uh, uh, let's let's try to bring Rick back in. You know, we we plan this out to have one guest after another, but you know what? Let's just bring him in and see if see if he's caught up with us now. Let's see if this works. Rick, how are you? Hello, hello. hello. Are you hey, with hey, me? Rick. Hey, Rick. Colin, how you doing? It's the guy. I'm with. Yes, you. success. I'm with All right. You. Impulse is exploding. What's going on? Rick, I, I miss you, buddy. How you been? I, I've been good. It's been good, and then uh, it, it gets weird, and it gets good, and then I, I, I'm, I'm 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 kind of a first responder to the voice in my head. How did that How have you been? You don't look any older or, or, or anything. You, you look like the, the hot chick you always look like. <laughs> thank you buddy i've yeah. been good i've been I, mi I miss you man i used to book rick uh in my shows at the underground remember that yeah that's right where was it uh, it was uptown right yeah 108th and broadway yeah we we, we had fun actually it wasn't uh, uptight like, like, like you get that, that downtown it's like i have to be good but i, I became a comic because i like to fuck things up Right. Well, that's just that. Do it with a certain cadence, like a limping moose. <laughs> Keep it down, you know. There, and there. You ever get? So we, you, you ever go home and wait for my, my, my marriage to, to end, and then it, does, it, it does not. And you realize she was right the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have a fever, and you don't need heroin. Right, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I always say you're wrong at least half the time in a relationship. I, I don't even know uh, how to have a conversation. I've been on stage four times a night for 100 years. And <laughs> backwards in New Jer 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 Jersey, living in the back, back, back of a home, realizing I'm lucky my arm is too short to reach the trigger. Ooh, <laughs> Uh, you're cutting out a little uh, bit there, buddy. Well, I'm not going to repeat it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing you guys. You look great. Who's, What's who's great? The movie guy? Who's the movie who's the... guy's influence? Oh, we were just talking about that. He's done a lot of uh, he's done a lot of stuff. He's been working with a lot of people, and uh, actually, Joe, you should consider. Uh, Rick for work because he's phenomenal. In fact, let's let's show a couple of his clips. He's working. We're going to show some clips here, Rick. Okay, uh, uh... okay that's Joe's clip. <laughs> that's not Rick. <laughs> yeah, be great. And here here is where it gets left off. If we talk to a dolphin, we get some information out of him. And he's fine. <laughs> We got to show a little more than that. Let's show some more. That was By the way, th that was Joe Rogan. That was uh, 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 Cheech Marin. Really? That yeah. You'll keep an eye out for it. You'll keep both eyes open looking for my jacket. That was on the Mark Marin show. How was that? Not a good looking girl. <laughs> Did you <laughs> get the jacket back? I'm worried about the jacket. Pick up, cheat on my wife, pick, pick, pick up a, a, a girl, apologize to my wife, he's the best thing that ever ha happened to me, and read uh, Camus, uh, either a, another moose, uh, I, just got, <laughs> I think I'm my dad, I'll, I'll call you back. Yeah. No, she's not. No? Uh, <laughs> man. How was it? Look, you and Mark both yeah, that, did my room. You and Mark. 
What's it? You and Mark Marin both did my room. Oh, you're cutting out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Somebody said something. <laughs> I am so burned out. Uh, <laughs> ask me a quick, quick question. I don't want to, to do that. Okay, I'm, so I'm, I got I a question. I'm good, man. It's not your fault. It's it's not your fault. It's it's the technology. It's 2020 is what it is, Rick. Live so you should never put 2020 in front of a Parkinson's guy. <laughs> uh, I saw I you. Why, why, why did my wife put your hand in front of my face? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no problem. Last time I saw you, you were uh, we were at the Hollywood Improv. And uh, Dane Cook asked to get a picture taken with you. Do you remember that? Things are going well. I remember that. <laughs> uh, my, my wife thinks comedians have timing. Right? She goes, wait for them to talk. And I'm like, no, it, it's, it's called a comedic conversation where everybody, will, everybody turns everybody on. Comedians shouldn't even talk anymore. They just... I have sex with each other no matter what this is. This, this, this <laughs> pro, I'll say it, their proclivities are. Yeah, I'm a Republican now. I have I'm not opening for either of you. <laughs> hey, you ever see you ever hate yourself so much your apartment wants you out? I'm trying to come up with new, new, new stuff. <laughs> I, I hate putting a teddy bear. Does that mean I was incessant? Because I have one of each. I see, I'll show you in the window. But I don't use my camera. I, I use a full length, a full size movie ca ca camera. I, I don't take films on my cell phone because because it's it's realism. It's not reality, and it makes us look like little men instead of the big guys we are. The Christopher Walkins and uh, G. Gordon Livin. I can't shut up, so. No. Ravenous. Is there How a buffet? Was <laughs> <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> <laughs> Normally, if we. <laughs> um, am I supposed to move my hands? I'm not here to be discovered. <laughs> hey. We, we none of us have gigs. Can we come Can over you? and and promise you everything? Okay, I'm having a <laughs> career tr 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 trigger. This, this, <laughs> somebody smells J J J Jewish there, and it's me. And that's not a trigger; that's trauma. So, would H Hitler make a cool barista? Was that the question? <laughs> I think he'd humble. I think he'd humble him. I think he'd know his roots. He knows his roots. <laughs> That's what I'm when I'm like, now I'm so insecure because of Paul, Paul, Paul Parkinson's. It's true. I call people up and I go, hey, why don't you do this f f film? I, 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 and they finish the work for me. They go, I, I, I say, yeah, you want to finish this film? I, 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 I wrote. And they go, like, sure. And I, I go, oh, okay, it's, it'll be done in a year. I just needed to hear someone's voice. <laughs> you know, who doesn't know why. I do. I mean, hey. we should do this on leash. We, you should be, have a, a leash and a thousand dollars around my car. Hey, my wife Rick. How about your book? Are you, Can you tell me about your book? Yes or no, Rick? <laughs> who, who is, who, Rick? Who is he? Poxy? Remember that guy? We can trust him, right? Comics are too many. They're, like, eh, 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 they're becoming eh, eh, edgy potsies. They're like eh, angry Ralph Mouse. We're, we're, uh, it's a hybrid of genius and scumbag. Bang. Bang. <laughs> uh, how, how the hell are you, Danny? I, Rick, I'm good, man. I miss you, buddy. I really do. I miss. Uh, we used to hang out all the time at the underground, and uh, I used to watch you, and then I'd be so inspired by your set. That I would get up afterwards, and I was way better. You know, it was just I was much more improvisational. It you always inspired me on the stage. Thanks, man. I appreciate yeah. that. No, it's true. And I want to. I want to. I want. 
I want to uh, promote your book. So you want to tell us about your book? The book is really good. Unfiltered, it's called. Not to be confused with Marin's Unfiltered and Louis' Unfiltered. I'm only kidding. Forgetting. I know somebody has another one. But but it's really really good. I, I I promise you that there's stuff in there that there's even an imitation of we're, we're robbing a bank, and I did performed it live, where you arch your back enough, you turn into a lizard, and you can and I call it the li li lizard's way, and you really look like a guy who can see all around in his back and front. Holy <laughs> shit, that was that sounded crazy right now, but it actually it's really <laughs> valuable. And the new COVID uh, um, my, my money on the s s sidewalk scheme. It's a long story. But, but, but just remember, Rick talk, told me about a lizard. <laughs> were... Well, it definitely got some great reviews. It definitely got some great reviews. And um, yeah, yeah. I want I want to show yeah. I want to show a couple more clips of you. If yeah. we can show the full clips. Yeah, you worked with Louis C.K. Let's let's look at the pilot. So just ride it, ride it. What's the what's with all the chicken shit fear? Why are you so afraid? I'm not. And this isn't even anger. This is what you're afraid of. This feeling. It's like a tundra and horses blood running through your veins and hurricanes and typhoons. Oh, we have to run. We need the government. No, we don't. Just need to strip. That's all we have to do is just strip like that, like this, and that's how. You get what you, that's not how you live. <laughs> it, and I think, yeah. was that the one where you did full frontal nudity, nudity on the Louis show? Uh, it could be. <laughs> yeah. 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 Here we are. Welcome to Jerry's gym. Yeah, great. Okay. Now, let's start with a little warm-up, something to get the blood flowing. Don't you need to change into some workout clothes or something? D don't you need to change into some workout clothes or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's not about fashion. <laughs> this is great stuff, man. Great stuff, man. You worked with the best of the best. Everybody considers you a legend. But, but listen, you, you want to can I tell you the story behind that? Yeah. All right, the story behind that is you really wanted me to jump up on the, 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 the bench. You saw that, right? Yeah. All right, well, the stuntman goes, man, ain't nobody can jump up on a bench and get their boots in, in the fence and then walk across the, the fence with their boots getting in, in every hole. And, and he goes, he, and we, we, we were practicing for an uh, 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 hour. We, we, we couldn't do it. And I looked at how he was te 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 teaching me. He goes, it can't be done, man. I'm so serious. We would have done it. So I, I said, you know, uh, the only time I ever w w learned anything was when I did, 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 did it repeatedly the, the wrong way. So I, I just ran against the fence, kept throwing myself up against the fence. Next thing I know, I'm on top of the fence and I'm on top, 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 top of the, the bench. And then moving across, you're yelling like the David Mamet type line, like, always be climbing. And, and the guy was like, hey, nobody can do that stunt. That's just, I guess that means more, more, more to me. And if I had a wife who um, wasn't as go, go, gorgeous as her, but was hard, hard as nails, like uh, the guy next door who has no o o organs, apparently. We have a neighbor who says, I don't have no he doesn't have any organs. I'm like, how do you live? He says, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and I said, I, oh, I said, how could you not know? He goes, get out of here. Or I'm going to kill you. And so I <laughs> boom. That would be you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I right. this freaking day. That was said, the safe choice. I said, I, I blew him for a couch. <laughs> 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 all right so so i just wanted to 
I just wanted to let you know, we, 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 we wanted to cut back for a quick second because we got, we were actually watching the uh, Thanksgiving day parade rehearsals. And I just, we keep checking in. Oh, yeah. I'm hoping it gets better. So let's, let's see what ha what's happening now. Can you hold the state pump there for a few minutes? If by few you mean less than one, then sure, we can do that. Okay, that's, that's just not good. That's just not going any better at all. That's a, it's, I, this is 2020, man. I don't know, man. It's crazy. I can't hear the I we I think we have a tur I think we have a turkey virus or something. The, the turkeys keep coming back. I have no idea why or or when they're going to come back. Hey, Peter, I can call you back. We can do it again. I'll call you tomorrow. We'll plan a time. Absolutely, buddy. Absolutely. We we will definitely work it out. No, no, it's totally cool, man. It's the technical issues. It's not your problem. We'll figure it out. All right, all right, cool, cool. Nice meeting you, Rick. Rick. Hope to talk to you more soon. Love Rick's you, buddy. We're going to plug your yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to plug Rick's book. Uh, Rick's book is unfiltered. Um, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, we're going to have we're going to have links. There you go, unfiltered. We're going to have links to that. It's got rave reviews and his albums. These are some of his albums. So we're gonna we're gonna have all that in the uh, uh, comments and uh, in the uh, on the, when we have the YouTube thing tomorrow uh, in the description. There's gonna be links so that you can get check out all Rick's stuff. So Rick, thank you, and we're gonna bring you back. But we got we'll figure out those issues and we'll bring you back so that we can fully hear you, buddy. You 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 got it. You got it. I'll be having a for sure. Excuse me. I, I, I love, love you. <laughs> all right, I love you, buddy. Good to see you again. Rick night, is Rick. awesome. Oh, Rick man. Is great. I wish we had the technical issues yeah. ironed out, man. Because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because he can go, he can go crazy. He can be, he, he's awesome. So, um, I know exactly what that's all about. Like with com some com professional comedians that I've worked with on set, when they go, they're just like, they light the whole, the whole setup everybody's rolling everybody's having a good time and they're just doing their craft this and, is some of the most troubled like like emotionally troubled but yet just the most endearing and beautiful people are comedians rick is has been an inspiration to me since i started doing stand up and um in fact uh i mean kevin you know he's undeniable that's the word undeniable He's um he's done so much for comedians just by being himself and being that I mean he he would go on these rants that were just insane and they were incredible and uh as a as a young comic at the time I would just sit there and I was just like oh if, my god if if you were if you were to recommend something of his like right now that I could go and watch and everybody would go and watch what was what would be the one thing you would want us to go and watch right now uh, hi. Welcome to Subway Smiles. <laughs> I told you we'll get to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, girls. I'm a little shaky. I was just shot at. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's awesome. We're gonna we're gonna actually put some links to uh, his uh, work uh, in the YouTube thing tomorrow. But uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I remember times when I was I would literally uh, and I was running shows on 107th Broadway, and I would sit there and I'd watch him, and then afterwards I would get up and I would annihilate because I just had that energy kind of passed on. I because I just felt his energy and I felt that energy, and I got up and and I was improvising more, you know, and it was. It's just, it's free. He's a, he's one of the most free comedians I've ever seen on stage. Just epic, epic. And I hope we, we'll, we'll get him back. We got to get, uh, we'll get him back. It'll be good. So anyway, <laughs> so Joe. Yes. I, uh, I want to know more about you, buddy. So tell me now, how did you get started? Uh, that's a great question. How did I get started? 
You know what? Uh, you know, back in 1977, I was seven years old and my dad knew I liked, you know, dragons and dinosaurs, like all, you know, young, young men grow up. You know, we, you know, we like, you know, basic, basic, uh, stuff, you know, for fantasy. That way was my thing, dragons and dinosaurs. And uh, he was babysitting me one, um, one the weekend when my mother was away with her friends on a trip. And he said, son, sit down and watch this. I'm going to go outside and do some, some work. We, we live, we, I grew up on a goat ranch in the Lotus, Texas. And, goat uh, ranch. The goat ranch. Yeah. <laughs> with a slaughterhouse. It was 55 acres of property. Just kind of a crazy, crazy lifestyle. Crazy, crazy deal. Be beautiful can I just, country though. Can I tell you goats scare the shit out of me? Oh. They, they're, they're like they're cute when they're little and they grow up and become scary yeah yes their faces they're yes. almost human well be, and also they, when they when they scream they sound like human beings do they have their yes. own personalities you, you, say that again do they have their own personalities oh abs absolutely absolutely but when they but, but, but when they're ever in fear they sound like screaming people so like you know i grew up with a with a slaughterhouse on our property and whenever they would kill the goats you could hear them screaming oh. you know. i mean I, I, oh. I, I, I saw things that no that no seven-year-old should see you know uh it, it, you know it was a very traumatizing experience growing up uh in south texas during that time so but that, you know, explain, that explains your movies that's right <laughs> that, that, large group of goats shouting this hardly seems necessary <laughs> but, but ultimately my father knew exactly what would make me happy and he sat me down in front of the tv and he showed me godzilla versus the smog monster and when that movie was over, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. That was seven years old, and you that know, just catapulted me off to, onto my career. You know what? Speaking of that, you just reminded me. We got to check back with the parade again. And I think Susanna, you know, you know what we want. Get back. I said, "There's nothing better than watching, you know, giant monsters mindlessly destroy a city." I know. It's, that's, I gotta... that's what happens at the, the 2020 Thanksgiving Day Parade. That's what, right. I got to reschedule my trip to 39th Street. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it'd be a problem. I think they were in Chinatown. <laughs> I think that's where they were with it just now. <laughs> okay, so the uh, the the goats. Oh man, that's crazy that you grew up with that, and it was a slaughterhouse, so you had to hear oh, them God. screaming yes. like humans. Well, uh, let me let me tell you something crazy. One time, uh, we brought out a cow. Uh, this was Easter Sunday. We were going to have a, a fr fresh cow meat, and we brought brought, brought out the, one of the cows. In front, in front of the whole family, and my uncle pulled out a gun and shot it in the head. Oh! And then, it, and then it fell down, and they started to butcher it, and it stood back up. <gasps> so they had to go get the gun because they put it away and shoot it again. Oh my God! This is South Texas in nineteen in the nineteen seventies. That sounds like Kevin's last date. It's probably Texas now, still in some some parts of the state. Uh, because it's just a crazy different world. Oh it's my just God. a crazy different world. Yeah. Yeah. That well, it looks like the bulls are getting revenge uh, at the parade. Yes. Please <laughs> let, let them, let them, you know. <laughs> I, I I didn't partake in any of it. I you know I have I I I left the, you know South Texas back in 1989 and ran to Hollywood to become a filmmaker and never looked back. I went I went home for three years once uh, to be with my family for a little bit and but then I moved back out to LA again and uh, you know it's it's, it's it's for me it's it's I'm a I'm a native Californian basically kind of you know raised myself there. Since I, I miss was LA right now. I miss LA right now. I do. I do. I really do. It's fun. It's it's fun. You know, people. people... I, Go ahead. I'm in up. I'm in upstate New York now. So oh, and we love New York too. We love New York. That's, yeah. You know, oh no, it's just you can't have a bad day in New York City. No. I just can't. I just can't. Danny's, bad, can't Danny's closer day. to the goats, though. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. I just can't help worry that that Dolly Parton's going to get gored from those bulls. <laughs> You know, she's I, working I the parade. That <laughs> <laughs> she's working the parade, isn't she? Tomorrow, hopefully, they've put her in a safe holding pen. <laughs> I th maybe she'll be riding one of them. Down there. <laughs> mm. So, now, when you were a little kid, did you you didn't do any filming? You just you just had to deal with that, right? 
Well, when I was 12 years old, it was 1982. And that was the year that uh, the home video can the video camera was released to the home, uh, home retail market for the very first time. And you know, you're, the average citizen could buy an actual video camera. The VHS, the big VHS, VHS. the big VHS. And you could get a portable one that had a battery on the side of it. And um, I begged and pleaded my parents to buy me one. And uh, my father was a goat farmer and my mother was a school teacher. And between the two of them, they, 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 they worked and they saved up the money and they bought me a video camera. And when they gave it to me, they said it was $2,200. That, wow. was, that was 1982. That's a lot of money in 1982 oh, yeah. for, for a goat farmer and a school teacher. And they gave me that video camera and they said, son, here's your college education. And that's exactly what happened. You know? Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. So it, I, my parents it, actually it, uh, put me in college for engineering. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, you know, I would no. rather they have done that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you know, it's it's it, they they knew they they knew that I was going to be an artist, and they knew the struggles and trials and tribulations of being an artist, trying to make a career out of it. And you know, the, all the powers that be have surrounded me with very kind, loving, beautiful people that have supported me and offered me words of encouragement. I have not come as far as I've come without the help of everybody around me. Well, that's great. That's great, man. That's also, good because you, you got to remember that. What was that, Kevin? Also great that it seems like your your family was very supportive and very involved. Like your dad put you on to, to the horror films yeah. and then yeah. started you off with a camera. But, uh, <laughs> no, seriously, you're absolutely right. No, does, okay. does he have a favorite film that you made? Okay. Well, my father passed away in 1997 from a massive heart attack, only a quarter of a mile from the house. Wow. But we, 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 we did bond over uh, a movie, uh, John Carpenter's remake of The Thing. Uh, I ah. remember uh, that. And uh, there's a movie called Cutthroat Island that stars Gina Davis, it's directed by Rennie Harlan. And, you know, those two movies, you know, my dad and I could sit and watch forever. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he was, a, he, was a, he was big into, you know, he supported me with my career and anything I wanted. He was my biggest cheerleader. Um, so yeah, but I also had cousins. I had, I had two cousins that were twins. They were 22 years older than me, Eddie and Ernest Paris. And when I was like 12 years old, they would pick me up on the weekends and take me into San Antonio, Texas, which was the biggest town. And we'd go to record conventions and we'd go to like these, you know, back in the eighties, any movie went, every movie went to the movie theater, whether it was a sleaze movie theater or a big, you know, uh, Hollywood movie <laughs> theater. And you could see movies from like other countries that were unrated non-rated rated n or rated x or rated u and they weren't really necessarily rated x for uh nudity they were rated x for gore and violence and goats so, and, go and you know because they, they, they <laughs> crazy they get some crazy stuff back then live and, uh, nude goats <laughs> <laughs> they'd so, shave goats and make them look mm -hmm. like humans and oh, then dress them up and <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a whole i have a story about that too if you want to hear but uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, I'm but, not sure. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> real <laughs> house goats of San Antonio, <laughs> California. <No. But, laughs> well, Her well, Herschel Gordon Lewis told me that they used to take like a, a goat carcass and they would cover it in derma wax, which was basically mortician's wax, to look like human beings. And then they would, you know, use it in the slasher films, and they would cut away the derma wax, and there'd be a real animal carcass underneath. Oh, it. That's the crazy God. stuff they used to do back in the day, but we don't do that anymore. Well, that's illegal we, now, we, I think. Well, you just uh, no one wants to see a real animal dead. No, of course it's not. not. That's no. not inter that's not entertaining. But they used to do it back in the day, you know. And unless we, uh, it's unless it's those turkeys who created twenty twenty. <laughs> They keep coming back. I'm telling you, they're taking over. <laughs> Is there a specific horror film that represents the line of new technology kind of taking over? Mm, like, is there a, a specific question. film that brought us from the old to the new world? Uh, I think it was a very gradual change, you know, with the way CGI kind of, kind of slithered its way in. And it was either all or nothing. I mean, right. I actually... You know, uh, I went to school for CGI and I made a horror film that was mostly CGI back in 2012. And uh, a lot of people didn't like it, but it's actually the, it actually has the Guinness Book of World Record for the highest body count in a slasher movie. And, you know, like I said, it's a little bit of both, you know, you got to have Except a for Kevin's basement. Kevin's basement's got more. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you, got, you got a body count? I got to uh, pass Richard Ramirez before we can go making announcements. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So I, I I couldn't pinpoint just one, uh, but uh, I think it was it was kind of a gradual 
transition because they started using like digital blood, you know, then decapitating people digitally. Well, now, CGI CGI was terrible at first. It, it was it was awful. It looks so yeah. fake. If you if you go back and watch it now, it looks like a video game. Yeah, but 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 it was mind blowing at the time when it was first when it first came out. Yeah, right, right, right. But uh, uh, it used to be like a lot of people today uh, like the practical effects more because they look more real. Although the CGI, like you said, now you mix it in, it's and it's good because you, you get, got you got to finesse it. You know, it's yeah. like you got to finesse it. You know, massage right. it in. You know, just put it. You know, daintily put it when you need it. Don't don't create something from scratch digitally. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah don't you, you gotta be careful of your adjectives. You're getting Kevin excited. <laughs> well, that, that, that's, that's the kind of the way, the way I use digital stuff. You know, I, I like to shoot everything on set. And then if I have to uh, composite or put the elements together and blend them, I use a little digital stuff. That's my favorite way to do it. You know, sure. but, that's sure. awesome. it's like you already killed the guy. But now it was self defense. I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> the forensics yeah. are going to back that you killed the guy. But the <laughs> self defense story is very helpful. Now, you that's, know what's that layer that you need? You know, yeah. you know what scares I, I, me? Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was thinking because sometimes I watch these uh the, these these cops uh their 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 cameras and you know somehow a gun appears here or they make it look and I'm thinking I think they could have CG died that in. No one's gonna know. It's just a right? little enhancement. No one's gonna know. Just a little uh, yeah. enhancement. I put a little over there, a little bit of this. Yeah, it's all blurry and pixelated. Yeah, I'll just kind of put a gun in his hand there or put a little bit more blood over there, or you know, it could well, be you done. Know, you know what scares Four other me? victims here. No big exactly. deal. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what scares me about this though is now you can make almost anybody look like they're doing anything. That's right. Yeah. So so people who don't understand that, you can make a video. Of someone doing something uh, uh, mm. that they they never did, and show it to their family. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and 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 and, and, then, and then once you could ruin you could ruin you, someone's life. Absolutely, even if it's fake, even yep. if it's fake, and people know it's fake. Yep, it could still be very damaging. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So Kevin, don't act out anymore on the show, please. <laughs> <laughs> be careful. <laughs> I, I, I always say, don't put pictures on the internet with your mouth open. <laughs> no, if you're gonna smile, smile. Oh, I just laugh with my mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Damn it! I was <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! All right, throw so up, throw so up where the gatekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always said about the people holding up the 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 signs. The whiteboard you can put anything on that oh yeah be careful yeah be careful. And, and seriously there's there's a lot of uneducated people who will who will look at that and think that's real mm. they'll believe it no matter what anybody mm. says they, they don't even they don't even care if it's real or not they'll just use it as a tool to do whatever they want yep 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 so where can people find you they can find me on facebook.com backslash joe.castro or instagram which is Joe underscore Castro underscore director, you know, and send me a friend request, but more importantly, send me a message, say hello and let's make a movie, you know, let, let, let's, let's make some art. Let's make the world a better place. One movie at a time. There you go. There you go. All right. Before you go, I want to take one more check back to the parade. Let's see how it's going now. I'm let's sure take it's one more great. Look. Uh, it's going to be better now. Absolutely. hundred <laughs> percent. Totally. It's got it. It's, it's, no it's, it's a two and 10. That was it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the turkeys. They're trying to kill us. Well, Joe, thank you. Thank, thank you, for Kevin. Thank show. you, Danny, for having me on the show. <laughs> Joe, is a and, pleasure. Uh, absolutely. Anytime. Uh, if you're ever out in L.A. or coming our way, please reach out and say hello before you get there so we can have dinner, have grab a cup of coffee, talk shop, and have some yep. laughs. I still have my place out there. So I've been. Excellent. It's, it's the most expensive storage unit. I've ever paid for. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, check out all the stuff on the, uh, we're going to have it all on the YouTube. You can click on the same link that you clicked on to watch this live and you'll be able to check the description to find out all the links to Rick and to Joe and to me and Kevin. 
Forget about Kevin. Don't worry about Kevin. He's fired. He's not coming on again. Uh, thank you guys so much. Peace out. Stay tuned for the trailer. What's this? Cartoons? It's not cartoons, it's teratoons. Well, it kind of looks like cartoons to me. In a world where the line between reality and nightmare has been crossed. Uh, who are they? I have no idea. Terror has a new face. Two characters bound by evil, determined to destroy. We have broken through the fragile veil that separated us from them. Only one woman has the power to stop the insane carnage. <laughs> the fight for her existence begins and ends today. You're animals! Both of you! Horrible, filthy animals! <laughs> Terror to Animated to kill. Warning. This trailer cannot show all the terrifying and grotesque splatter sequences from the motion picture Terror Tunes 3. The producer strongly advised that those who suffer from epileptic seizures and weak heart conditions will put their life at risk by viewing this unique and horrifying movie. Consult a physician before viewing this movie. Something inside of the Shadow Hills Presbyterian Hospital. Something deadly remains there. It is silently waiting, watching, and plotting. I know you're in there. Something diabolical. Did somebody say magic? And whatever it is, it's ready to be awakened. And now, everyone is in danger. Every living soul must be destroyed, and no one is safe. What the hell are you doing? I challenge you to hold on to your sanity during the relentless, insane, and blood-soaked climax of... <laughs> Terror Tunes 3, Herschel's Gory Story. You have been forewarned. Nope. Uh. <laughs>